We don't often visit a place more than once. But this unassuming South American country, made up of four unique worlds, keeps us coming back for more. So much more. This is Ecuador. And as usual, our adventure starts with a plane. Not this one. No. That one. It's a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. This little turboprop was taking us deep into the Amazon. And before long, there was nothing left but rainforest outside our windows. And we realized that there would be nowhere to land this thing, right? I guess that'll do. And just like that, the pilot left us in the jungle. We were a little nervous, but also excited to have the Warani share their way of life with us. I can't believe we're finally here. Liv has officially been adopted into the tribe. <laughs> the village where we were welcomed so warmly wasn't actually our final destination. We arrived at our home for the next couple of nights, well after dark, not knowing what would await us the following morning. Wow, well, it's amazing waking up to the smells and sounds of the Amazon. I think that's a monkey. This little camp served as our base. <laughs> Good morning. To learn about the way the Warani have lived in this jungle for thousands of years. And that doesn't come without its challenges. I'll bring your feet like this. I'm climbing a tree! <laughs> We're going for a hike in the jungle with the Waranis. Mm -mm. <laughs> I do not do that. <laughs> It was incredible watching the kids just take it all in. He just took down this tree where they make a lot of their textile from. And that's where they get their fibers from, but it's covered in spikes. And so to get to it, he took down another tree to help pull the center post down. And suddenly there was this bird, Otobo, the chief, pointed out. He hadn't seen it in seven years. Has anyone seen Liv? Yeah. <laughs> it fits perfectly. Our next stop was also in the Amazon, but of a slightly different nature. This is so cool. We arrived to find one of the most spectacular dinner settings at the end of a pier extending over a jungle lake. I snuck out early this morning to check out the local observation tower, which sits right in the canopy of the jungle. And let's see if we can find some toucans. No way. We find anything here? What? Not only did we find two cans, but everywhere I looked, we were surrounded by life. And 
I guess that's why it's called a rainforest. But the rain would also stop just as abruptly as it began. Hello. Yeah. Where are we going? We're looking for caimans. Whoa, look. Coming out of the Amazon, it was time to head into the Andes, with our first stop being Ecuador's capital, Quito. After a quick stop at our hacienda, we ventured out to learn about an ancient art, agave harvesting. Want to try it? Yeah. I could drink that all day. The next morning, we had a date with a healer for a traditional cleansing ritual. I'm not sure what the kiddos need a cleansing of, but they seem to really enjoy this ancient ritual that's still prevalent throughout Ecuador. And just a couple hours drive from the city, we got to the immensely beautiful Cotopaxi volcano which turned out to be quite active during our stay here. Oh, it's so cozy in here. Oh my gosh, it feels like home. I love this place. What an incredible view to be waking up to. Time for a horseback riding lesson from a true Ecuadorian cowboy, a chagra. Mucho gusto tequila. Do you know what that means? You're a really pretty horse tequila. It might as well. saying goodbye. After heading up the mountain a bit further, we found ourselves in one of the most idyllic landscapes we had ever been in. And we already had a warm fire waiting for us back at the hacienda. Super puffy and very hot. How is that? <laughs> Yum. I know most people think of Ecuador as the Amazon and Galapagos and the coast. But to be honest, the whole Andes region is some of my favorite. How pretty is this lake? It's so pretty. The hike along Quilatoas Caldera is nothing short of breathtaking not just due to the altitude. I feel like every time we step out of the car, it's like we are quite literally stepping into a painting. Liv, what are you doing here? I'm painting something. Is he teaching you? Mm -hmm. Wow, Liv. Well I'm done. I'm so proud of it. <gasps> are you going to be hiking that? Are they the cutest or what? They're a little fuzzballs. This is how much I love her. My whole body and her whole body. This is normal route from here. How many times have you been up to Brazil? On top of Chimbaza, I was more than a thousand times. More than a thousand times? In my life. Wow. The legendary Marco Cruz was prepping me for tomorrow's little hike. Something that I learned from Marco that completely blew me away is that due to our planet being slightly oval in shape, Chimborazo turns out to be the actual highest mountain on Earth when measured from the center of our planet rather than the median sea level. 
making it much higher than even Mount Everest. I climbed Chimborazo in 58 when I was 13 years old. This experience changed all my life. We've just surpassed 5,000 meters, but Chimborazo is over 6,300 meters, so it feels like we haven't even made a dent in it. This marks the end of our little expedition here, but I applaud those who've made it to the top. Thank you, Marco, for taking me up here. Next stop, the coast. Do you know what this is? I don't know. That is cacao. I came from the mud. There's dirt on my hands. Why does it taste so fruity? Tenemos diferentes plantas frutales como de mangos y guanábanas alrededor de la plantación de cacao y por eso que cada semilla tiene sus aromas frutales y sabores frutales. It's 100%. Tastes like it needs sugar. Yeah. <laughs> On our way to the beach, we got to sample the local music of the colorful coastal city of Guayaquil. Now that we're at the coast, we've been driving through all these little beach towns and what better place than here to get a surf lesson. Hey Steven. Hi. Besides the coastal water being ridiculously warm, turns out that Ecuador is great for surfing because there's a break for every skill level, including mine. I just can't believe I nailed that on my first try. Last stop for the day, this epitome of a paradise beach, Los Frias. as Panama hats turns out to be actually Ecuador hats. Estos sombreros mal conocido como Panama hat, que nunca tiene que ver con Panama. Es un sombrero totalmente ecuatoriano, 100% de este pueblo llamado Pino. I love this hat. The hats were perfect for our next island destination, Galapagos. If you've seen our previous Galapagos video, you know that we first had to catch up with some old friends who have some rather interesting neighbors. Liz, what do you have there? It's a present for my friend that we're going to see. Her name is Monica. Monica! Very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Not even the rain can bring down my excitement of being back here in Galapagos. Have a look. Let's find some tortoises. Our first stop, Santa Cruz, is known for its tortoises in its highlands. Brina said this one that you were just taking pictures of is 80 to 100 years old based on the size of its shell. Wow. The tortoise has no teeth, just like you. Look at this sea light. Kids, come here. Do you want to go snorkeling with the sea lion? Yeah! And just a short walk through the mangroves, we arrived at a bay filled with marine iguanas as well as sea lions. It's so fun! Oh, 
Swimming with sea lions was definitely one of our highlights in life. Oh my gosh, they're so cool. They're like little dinosaurs. We finally got to see the small, unassuming bird that made these islands so famous. Do you see that little bird in that nest? Mm -hmm. That's right. a Darwin finch. Dolphins! Right here! They're right next to us! Then we got to spend the afternoon on the incredibly beautiful Floriana Island in search of sea turtles and even more sea lions. What is this place? San Cristobal! Yeah, that's right, we're going to San Cristobal. The next island has a spectacle of a different kind taking place every evening when the sun sets. All the babies are looking for their mamas. There's a lot of drama trying to find your mama when they all look the same. <laughs> it's amazing. So we're about to go scuba diving in Galapagos. <laughs> so Kika Rock is supposedly one of the most renowned dive sites in the world. So we had heard a lot about this place, but the one thing we were really excited about was finding hammerheads. There's a sea lion, and there's a turtle, and... <laughs> They're ready for us. <sighs> Looks like we didn't have to wait long for those sharks. But the grand finale was still to come. And then something truly incredible happened. We suddenly found ourselves engulfed by a group of 23 sea turtles. How can two dives be two of my favorite dives I've ever done consecutively? Unbelievable. What just happened? It's like the perfect ending. Oh my gosh. To the perfect trip. <laughs> 